Hey everyone, it's Calvin here from Rival Technologies and Rich3 Insights. Uh, welcome back to Outliers. This is our weekly educational event series where we chat with experts and thought leaders to find out new strategies we can all use to engage deeper with our customers, get richer insights, and of course, drive better business outcomes. Um, today, we're talking about everything we need to know about women gamers. So uh, first and for foremost, we'll, we'll share some interesting um, and really eye-opening study that we did on the experience of women gamers. And this was uh, a study that we did in partnership with Lenovo this past summer. And then of course, we'll talk about best practices. So what approaches work when engaging with women gamers and you know, what are the outdated market research techniques that we probably need to rethink and completely avoid. Um, so if you have any questions or feedback throughout the event, please feel free to use the chat feature here on Zoom and you know, share them with us. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Our speakers today, uh, first and foremost, we have Cassie Kelly, who is a research consultant at uh, Tech and Gaming at Rich3 Insights. And we have Sean Campbell, who is VP of Tech and Gaming at Rich3 as well. Hey, Cassie. Hi, Sean. Um, hi. To start, let's give everyone a quick intro on the two of you. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do at Rich3 and maybe a little bit about your background in insights as well. Cassie, would you like to start? Sure. Um, so hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. Um, my name is Cassie. I'm, as Calvin mentioned, a research consultant here at Reach3. I specialize in tech and gaming. Um, and just generally, I'm a longtime gamer myself. I got my first console when I was a toddler, and I've been playing games ever since. Yeah. Love that. I'm Sean in San Francisco. Um, help head up our uh, tech and gaming research uh, practice here. Um, kind of same as Cassie. I'm, I'm a passionate gamer. It's my, my number one hobby, and um, that's uh, it's really exciting to do more research on this sort of thing um, because it's it's a big deal to help companies talk to gamers in a more authentic way that kind of works for both sides. You know, it helps you do better with this audience, and it helps them feel like they're being respected and not downplayed as like, oh, they're just gamers, they're just gamers. So. Raising both sides of the uh, of the equation here is what we're looking to do with this research. Love that. And Sean, when did you get your first uh, console? <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, the very, very first one is an Atari 2600. Um, way, way back when. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a while. I've been, I've been on the train for, for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> nice, awesome. Well, thanks for that intro. Uh, so, you know, as I mentioned this summer, which we partnered with Lenovo for an eye-opening study on the experience of women gamers. And the results got a lot of attention, not just in media, but also within the gaming community. You know, like people on Reddit were talking about it. Um, there were a lot of blogs that were talking about it. So first and foremost, can you share why we did the study and tell us a bit about the methodology and the approach? Yeah, so uh, to us, it was important to shine a brighter spotlight on a consistently problematic area in gaming and something that is starting to become talked about more, uh, but in, in our opinion, can't be talked about more or fast enough. Like, something needs to, needs to be done about this. Um, and that's just women in gaming. Uh, they, they have not a great time when gaming online, just simply for the fact of being who they are. Um, it's something that's been known, right? Like we're not, we're not like saying, oh my God, have you ever heard that women have a bad time gaming? Like, yeah, of course, everyone knows that. But we wanted to go a little deeper. We wanted to better understand why. Why are, then what are they dealing with? Um, because I feel like a lot of people kind of like acknowledge it and then kind of brush it aside. Like, oh yeah, we know they have to deal with, with a bunch of crap. But by, by putting it in front of people, specifically what they're dealing with, and especially through our video selfie methodology to actually hear. So we actually have women telling us on video the, the crap they're dealing with um, just makes it makes it come across that much more powerful uh, and, and really get the idea across that companies have to do something about this. It's a huge untapped market. It's the right thing to do, but it's also a huge untapped market that I feel like probably aren't really being utilized as best as they could. Um, so we went out to, I believe it was 600 um, women, 900, I'm sorry, 900 women, 300 each in US, China, and Germany. And we also threw in 100 men in the US because we wanted to do some interesting comparisons on how men saw the same issues 
uh, that women did on a handful of questions. Um, it's 1855 and they needed to be a, uh, a gamer that uh, plays at least one hour a week. Um, so it wasn't a huge bar, but uh, we were looking for people that played like, I hate to sound smug about it, but like real games, right? Like if you just play Candy Crush on your phone, that is a gamer, absolutely. But in this case, we wanted people that were playing online. So that was another criteria that they needed to uh, play games where you interact with others online. Mm. Cool. And you know, as I mentioned, uh, it's a fairly robust study, and you know, we'll we'll make sure everyone here and who pre-registered uh, will get the um, the deliverable, uh, so they can kind of um, uh, read it in detail if they'd like. But um, I'd like to hear some of your thoughts in terms of the most surprising fi findings from this study. Sure. So one of the things that I found the most surprising was the disparity between the way that women's treatments were perceived between men and women. So when we talked to women, we found that they're playing largely the same, you know, genres of games as men, you know, it's a lot of the same like shooters, competitive games, they're not really just playing like the Animal Crossing or the Candy Crush, which is kind of what some people assume. But despite the fact that they're playing exactly the same games as men, they're not having the same experience. Um, we found that 77% of women said that they felt that they had at least some level of frustration when they were playing a game as a direct result of their gender. And what I found really surprising is when we asked both men and women um, if they felt it was true that um, women being accepted in the gaming industry is not an issue, um, only 8% of women agree with that statement because obviously there isn't a real issue, but we found that 22% of men actually did agree that no, there's not an issue in the space and they don't feel that women being accepted in the community is an issue. So that's nearly three times as more men who don't perceive this as an issue. And to me, that really signifies that this is a space that's you know, under-researched, um, under-addressed, and this is something that we really should be working on and taking a serious look at um, to get a better sense of what women had been facing while they were online. We asked them to provide us with some videos that explained some of the treatment that they had faced when they were playing games online. We don't have time to show these here, but you will receive these in the follow-up deliverable. Um, and and the range of the range of treatment that they described was really kind of eye-opening things like patronizing comments, people assuming they don't know how to play a game, unwanted solicitations for relationships, um, gatekeeping or basically people challenging their gamer status, you know, saying, you know, you're you're a woman, so you're not a real gamer. They see a lot of this type of behavior when they're online. And as a result, 59% um, of women reported that when they play games, they either use a male avatar or use a gender neutral avatar just as a way of kind of mitigating that, those types of attacks online. And that's something that I found really astounding that that's, that's a really high number in my opinion. So seeing that I thought was really eye opening. Sean, what about you? Yeah, I mean, that, that over half like can't even be themselves is is just I don't know it's outrageous it really bums me out um, and what what kind of also really shows the problem is um, and and definitely please watch watch the videos we're going to send afterwards it's they're really really in interesting it's it's hard to pick the right word that fits because you don't want to call them good because it, it's it's not good that they're dealing with this but they're really enlightening um, it's that they're kind of resigned to that's just how it is and that it shouldn't be that way right? It shouldn't be that way. And it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's rough. Um, so we also looked into like, why, like what's, what, we had some hypotheses, but like what, what's causing that? And interest, interestingly enough, it's, it's not the games so much. Um, you know, I think, I think that that has come a ways um, as it used to be from the original iteration of, you know, Lara Croft, for example, in Tomb Raider. Um, we asked, you know, are you happy with how women are portrayed in these games? And surprisingly, almost all the women agreed. 80% said in blockbuster games, like the triple A's, the Assassin's Creed's, the, like the things that you think of with gaming, that um, yeah, they're, they're happy with how women are portrayed there. And 91% in indie games, which makes sense because indie games tend, you know, they have a little more free, uh, free will to address more progressive topics and, and be cooler with that. Um, Skins is another thing. So if you're not familiar with what skins are, um, a lot of games these days, you can basically put different outfits on uh, your character. Uh, it's a big thing in Fortnite, right? You hear they do all these um, uh, cross promotions where like, oh, I can 
play the game as LeBron James now, right? So I think it just changed your appearance. Um, those, uh, that's about 60% of women. So they're, they're at least okay. It was like a five point scale of like, so okay was like kind of the midpoint. Um, whereas 85% of men were at least okay with that. So again, I mean, you know, I feel like 61% for women can, it can be better, but at least it's, it's, it's a little better than I expected that to come out. But again, you see a disparity where men are like, yeah, the skins are fine for women. So, um, and another example of how they kind of just deal with it is like, we had a quote there that was like, it's lazy mode. I'm irritated, but I'm not too bothered. They're just kind of like, you know, this is just how it is, but it doesn't have to be how it is. Um, and companies can make a difference. We asked, do you think gaming companies can do anything about this? They're working to improve it. And, and yeah, 87% said they're open to this. Um, but it's an uphill battle because only 38% of those said yes, absolutely. And the other half said, yeah, maybe. And I think it's because they're just, they deal with this so much that they're a little skeptical. So it's up to gaming companies. Um, I'm sorry, not just gaming companies, but, but every company, because you have the Cokes, you have the Visas, everybody is wanting to advertise in esports and get into gaming a little bit. Um, so it's up to these companies to help make this difference and make women playing games. It's just, it's just normal. It's just a, a thing. Um, a couple ways that we can do that. We asked a little bit, um, 71% said just better presence in gaming ads. And we, through some of the different responses we got, it came across that like, they just want to be more of them wanted to just be included. Like maybe not even make such a big deal about of like, look at all these women in our gaming. Like, it's fine if there's just women, at it, but like, don't pander. That's the big thing. The tone has to be authentic. It can't be pandering to any audience of like, Hey, look, we're doing our part for women in gaming. And then after that ad runs done, it just goes back to normal. It needs to be authentic. It needs to show that the company really does care about changing these perceptions and isn't just trying to, you know, latch on to the latest, you know, news headline sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing I'll add <clears throat> is just um, how there's, there's plenty of room for improvement. You know, some companies are doing, or are starting to do this a little bit. Um, but we asked, uh, we gave a list of like, hey, do any of these companies do a good job with portraying women? And the number one company chosen was still only chosen by 39% of the women. And to us, that says that companies have a long ways to go to show they're serious about changing the perceptions. But there's there, there there's, there's a lot of opportunity there. There's this entire audience of, of gamers that just need to be better better integrated, more part of the gaming family and not always have to be kind of looking looking over their shoulder to like, oh, when's the next person gonna make fun of me or something like that, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and it's um, obviously like companies like Lenovo are trying to understand this group and, but it sounds like there's, there's a lot of work still that needs to be done, right? Like this is kind of just the beginning. Um, so um, on that note, I'd like to kind of talk a little bit about best practices as well, because obviously, you know, you need to make sure that when you're talking to a woman gamers, you know, you're considering their experience, but also their expectations. So um, can you share some best practices when talking to, uh, to this group? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start off with one, just the broad one that I touched on a second ago, it's just being authentic. Uh, which kind of goes for gamers overall. Like they're going to see right through you if like, you're like, come on. Like, well, the Coke ad recently, there was a big hubbub about, about their esports ad and how it was very tone deaf to actual gamers. Um, it's the same sort of thing with, with women uh, in, in my opinion, right? Like you have, to, you have to do the work, you have to talk to the people before putting something out there that a bunch of guys in suits thought like, oh yeah, this speaks to women gamers. Like it needs to be authentic. You need to make sure you're talking to them and getting them involved. Um, what else, Kelly? Cassie? Um, I would also just add, it's making sure that you have gamers and particularly women gamers on, on, your, on your team that's re reviewing your content, making sure that it's really gonna be appropriate for the target audience, basically making sure it's appropriate for gamers um, just because it comes off and, and this kind of is hand in hand with authenticity. It comes off very clearly when something has been written to pander to women or has been written to shoo them in as kind of an afterthought. Um, and people pick up on that really easily. Um, similarly, if you're going to be doing, 
you know, um, if you want to be doing like online research with women, making sure you put actual images of women in your research. I think that's also really important. Um, make sure they're authentic images. One thing I found actually putting together the research for this, the, the, the report for this research earlier was that when I was looking for images of women gaming online, they were always either with a man or the images honestly felt very inauthentic. Like they had an old controller that no one these days would be using or they had something that looks kind of bootleg. Things, little things like this that you don't think are going to come across. Um, gamers will notice, especially women gamers will notice and they won't like being represented that way. So it's very important to make sure that those types of topics are top of mind. Yeah, and it's, and it's remembering that they're, you know, they're gamers like anybody else, right? Like, there, you know, there was a period where it's like, oh, we're going to make a pink laptop and this is for girls to game, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, that's not to say there aren't some women that would like a pink laptop. Sure, there's guys that would like a hot pink laptop for sure. Um, but it's making sure like that can't be your only thing. That can't be like, oh, we made a pink laptop, check took care of women gamers, right? Like it, it needs to be, in my opinion, just another laptop in the line. And, and it needs to, you need to go into it saying that, oh yeah, women are just as likely to pick this, you know, crazy white and black laptop as they are this, you know, pink one. That's a, a little more, a little more festive or something. I don't know. Um, but that also goes to, you know, the, the games that you show, right? Like Cassie mentioned this at, at the start that, um, you know, again, a lot of women like Animal Crossing. A lot of men love Animal Crossing too, though. And that's not the only thing, right? So show a multitude of games. Like if you're doing a, a commercial or an ad an ad buy or something like that, sure, show, show women playing Animal Crossing, okay. But then show women playing Madden even. Show them playing Call of Duty, that sort of thing, because they do. You know, there's always gonna be a little bit of a skew of like, okay, yes, maybe, the majority, you know, there are more men than women playing Madden, but that doesn't mean women aren't playing Madden. It's a bigger group than a lot of people think, right? Just because one group is bigger than the other doesn't mean the, the other group isn't big enough to address and to include. Um, so I think that's really important. And the other thing I would consider too is everyone loves esports now. That's a big thing. There's a lot of money in esports, but don't be afraid to include women just playing like regular non esports games. Um, that's, uh, I think that's an angle that um, companies can can probably utilize that they really aren't. Like everyone wants to get in on the esports thing, and I get it. There's a lot of money in esports advertising, but you know, if you want to talk to gamers, do a, you can just do an an ad campaign about just playing games, and you can have a lot of variety pick from there, and you can talk to all your audiences all in one. Is is my opinion. Not an ad guy, but you can you can really address them all without it blaring at a sign saying this is for women gaming um, sort of thing. So it's just again that authentic. I keep coming back to that word authenticity, making sure it's coming across like you really care and you're not just checking off something for a for a PR need. Um, on the flip side, what are some of the things that uh, we should avoid? Uh. I would say definitely using some of the more stereotypical kind of um, like more bro -y language is something you definitely want to avoid. I think that's kind of a cliche that people really lean on when they think about how gaming used to be. And it's just, it can, it can definitely be off-putting. It can be alienating. Um, and there are, there are ways you can talk to gamers and sound authentic without using some of these, it's kind of like antiquated if that makes sense, like antiquated ways of how you think about you would talk to a gamer. Um, helps to just talk to some of your friends who are gamers, find, find, you know, a colleague who might be a gamer and, you know, again, have them basically check your work, make sure it seems authentic. What do you think about the, about the, uh, I guess I'll call it stereotypical gamer girl imagery, like the, the cat ear headphones and, and that sort of thing. Like, is that, like, I never want to like assume that nobody can be like, I mean, there's there's plenty of women gamer that mm -hmm. like chat your headphones and they like that kind of, you know, almost kawaii kind of yeah. thing. Is there, what do, what do you think, how, how do you think that would be seen? Like, is that is that okay to use? Is that something that you should stay away so you're not pandering? 
Um, I think it's always fine to have that kind of stuff as an option. Personally, I actually really like the cat hair headphones too. I think they're yeah, really cute, yeah. but yeah. I get that it's not it's not appropriate to say that. Well, women as a as a general group like these types of very cutesy things. In the same way, you would never make that kind of generalization about any group of people. You know, you kind of have to remember that women. You know, just like I, it's it's dumb that we have to say this, but sometimes people really do need to remind you that you know women are just as diverse as men, they have a diverse range of interests and diverse range of aesthetic preferences. So sure, have the cat girl headphones if you want, but don't, let's say, funnel all your marketing to saying this is the option for women and everything else is the option for men. I think it's really important to make sure that you're advertising consistently across all of the different variations of headsets or headphones, microphones, whatever it is that you're selling. I think that's important. Cool. Um, and and I would say just don't yeah just don't make assumptions right like be careful yeah. making assumptions that you you think you know precisely how women will react to the gaming thing you know it's uh, you know obviously we're in the research business we we're a big fan of like if you're early enough that it can be changed right so sometimes you run into that where it's like yeah we want to do some ad tests we want to test this copy but it's already kind of too far down the road to make many changes. Um, right. And it's kind of a balance, right? Because sometimes you feel like, well, it's hard to get them to, to understand what we're going for unless it's filmed and edited, but then you're too far to make any changes. So trying to involve like an early ad test stage when it is still just in the storyboard right. um, area and just making sure, even if you're like, you're not trying to specifically go after women gamer, gamers, it's just, it's a gamer campaign sort of thing be sure that you have a subgroup of women in there as well. Don't just say, oh, gamers, we'll just get who we get. And then you end up, you know, with 85% men in your sample, right? Make sure leave room for women to get in there too. And even if it's not aimed towards women and give their, their opinion, because they might point something out exactly like this in your study of saying, hey, actually that's, uh, that's kind of a crappy way to, to do this for women sort of thing. Early enough in the process to go, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we can totally fix that, that now that we know ahead of time because we did this research and this testing ahead of time when it was still kind of in the storyboard phase. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, just to kind of hurt that back, you know, I think there's an opportunity to be a little bit more iterative and like, um engaging um gamers not just women to be honest like gamers in more like ongoing conversations right so you know coming in with uh coming in curious from the very beginning and involving them from the start sounds like yeah. um i'd like to ask a little bit about the videos because i i was very impressed by the videos that you got i mean you know uh we which we know for what we're calling conversational research principles, which I think really help uh, get a ton of videos. And then of course you guys use the rival platform. Sorry, I said you guys, that's definitely my bad. I'm trying to rival that. <laughs> um, um, and yeah, reach three use uh, rival, the, the rival, rival platform to get those videos. So I'd like to maybe ask a bit, you know, I, I would love for you to kind of share some best practices in terms of how to get videos from uh, from participants, especially when you're talking about super sensitive subjects. Yeah, I think that I think that plays into it. Actually, plays really well into our conversational approach uh, because it's making them making them feel comfortable and just using natural conversation, which we 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 do to just get better responses. Period. Um, I think that helps. Um, I, you know, we also. We also just be really careful with the language used, right? We 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 acknowledged that it's a difficult topic, it's a sensitive topic, and you know, please share what you're comfortable sharing. We get it if you don't want to. You have to be you have to be accepting of the fact that they just might not be comfortable, and you have to go in. I think it's best to go in addressing that proactively, um, and just don't worry about the fact like, oh, well, they're going to see that, and then they're going to be like, okay, yeah, I'm not going to do a video. I mean, chances are they're going to do a video anyhow. That person right and instead it does show that you care you realize it's a sensitive topic um it can help to um definitely do an intro right um because i think on this one cassie didn't we have you do a just a quick hello at the beginning yeah yeah i think we did i think that helps a lot just having them having the respondent see 
kind of who they're talking to theoretically, um, giving a face to the research. I think that's really helpful. It's really humanizing for them and it can help them open up a lot more. And I, I correct me if I'm wrong, Cassie, but I think it's, it, it's, it is best in this situation with this topic that you do have a woman do that intro, right? It, it can be anybody, right? Like, you know, if, if, I mean, hopefully you have some women involved in, in the research or anything like that, but if for some reason you don't, okay, fine. Just, just grab somebody. To, it's just a quick hello. They don't have to share anything. And actually I would recommend maybe not. It's, it's kind of tough because we thought about that. We wanted to, um, we wanted to make them feel really comfortable but you also don't want to bias their responses by sharing an exact an example, right? As tempting as that is to go like, look, like, you know, I deal with this, this, and this, so I get it. Like, you're, it's a safe, safe space to talk. Um, you also want to be careful that you don't, you don't bias things. But just the presence of Cassie saying, hey, you know, how you doing? My name's Cassie. You know, we want to talk about some stuff today. It's a difficult topic, so really thankful to hear from you, that sort of thing. Just that puts a real person behind it. Like, Cassie, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of repeating what you said. But, um, <laughs> no, it, it's fine. It really does. It really does help. Um, and you want to be careful about the responses, right? So at least on rival platform, lots of times we have little like replies that pop up depending on what they say. Um, so you want to be careful with that. We had, I, I can't recall exactly what we had, but we had a couple that was like trying as best as you can through a, through a survey platform to, to be understanding be like, yeah, you know, we get it. That's, that's, that's tough. Right. That's not the exact wording. The exact word was probably better we actually used, but um, just kind of, reacting to theirs and kind of making them feel like yeah we get it like this is this is, that sucks you know i'm sorry you have yeah. to deal with that yeah and that comes back to the conversational research principles that we're talking about right like when we're talking you know when someone gives you the response you would naturally respond back something appropriate so definitely thinking about it more as a as a conversation rather than an interrogation i guess <laughs> yeah for sure and i'll add one one more quick thing on the videos is you have to be, you have to, and I, 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 this is the way this should be for all kinds of videos, but you definitely need to be very upfront about the usage of them, right? Especially if you're asking mm -hmm. about the sensitive stuff, you need to be super clear, super upfront, what they're going to be used by, who's going to see that. I mean, not exactly who's going to see them, but like, you need to assure them that like, this isn't going to end up in an advertisement, or it's not going to end up in any public facing thing. Um, because that could stop them from sharing if they're like, well, I don't want my face on I don't want to be watching Twitch and I could show up on an ad about like, we're doing better about gamers and they should like, so you just need to be kind of that they're sharing something really personal. So you need to be really, really upfront. And also you have to, you know, live up to that promise too of, of how the videos are going to be used. Mm, cool. Um, our friend Thomas has a question. So okay. bring him in. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much, Cassie and Sean. Um, I was just more focusing on wanting to see those women that the study wasn't on. So the ones that are um, playing the Candy Crush or like are gaming less than one hour, are they kind of seeing these same issues or are these issues more realized by women who are gaming or who are playing those AAA games as Call of Duty? Kind of what can, what can be done to get them to, to move from playing those like phone games and, and to feel more welcome in, in like a Call of Duty or Fortnite kind of setting? Mm. My my gut reaction to this is that overall, it's going to come down to normalizing gaming as something that anyone can get into. Like, I, I don't really think this is as much the case. It, it obviously still is a little bit, but like when I was much younger, I definitely got a lot of like, oh, you know, you shouldn't be playing so-and-so video game. Like, that's for boys. Like, don't play games. Um, and it kind of you know, kept me from wanting to play games online because I kind of assumed, well, this is a boy's space. I don't want to be there. And I suspect that uh, for some women, they're not playing these games because they just simply don't care. But I think there are definitely some women who don't get into the space because they don't feel welcome. And I think for those women, normalization, showing women playing games and ads, showing women in esports tournaments, all of these types of things are going to make the space more welcoming. And I think by doing that, it will naturally bring people into the space. And yeah, and the reason we didn't include them is, is you know, if that, for whatever reasons they are just playing those, if that is kind of all they're playing, they're probably not, uh, they're probably not dealing with this sort of thing because those types of games, you generally don't have the, the live video or the live audio yeah. chat, that sort of thing. I mean, th there's messaging mm -hmm. systems in some of those, and I'm sure there's some issues there, but you're generally in kind of your own, your own world a little bit. Um, so I think I think that's absolutely right. You know, there is probably some of this that prevents them like, oh, I've I've heard, you know, such and such got called this, this and this when they're playing Call of Duty. Like, well, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna 
stop you from wanting to play that. Um, and I think, you know, those people, it kind of, it's, it's difficult because you can get into the whole, like, well, just what games are right for that person rather than specifically how to deal with online toxicity. It's kind of goes hand in hand though. Like, you know, if somebody's only playing a Candy Crush, yeah, I mean, saying, here, try out Call of Duty is, eh, I don't know, I don't know. Again, but here we go, I just caught myself. I shouldn't make that assumption. I shouldn't make that assumption, I wanted to. I wanted to say like, well, that's a pretty big jump. For some it is, but for some it isn't. For some, they would love it. It's simple, like, oh yeah, I just run around and shoot people. I get it, totally fine. Um, so it's kind of finding the right on-ramp for that person and also reducing those barriers. So if it is somebody that would make that jump from Candy Crush to Call of Duty, um, that they're not like, yeah, this is fun. And then in their second game, they're being called unmentionable things like, okay, well, that was fun, but never mind, right? So um, there's there's a lot going on, but I think that's a, I think that's a very very true observation, Thomas. That some some probably do stay away because of that. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Um, we're at time, but I, I just have uh, one question here. Um, can you think of any brands that are are doing well in terms of how they engage or how they uh, reach out to women gamers? Just wondering if you know there are any examples that uh, people should be um, uh, looking into. Yes, we'll say the same thing. So I'm going to give it to you, Cassie. Oh, I for me definitely Nintendo. If you watch their ads. I think, I think Sean, you counted at one point and I think it was like, it must've been like 50% women in those ads, but they never played as like, look at this woman playing a game. It's always just like a group of people and some of them are women and they don't really talk about it. It just, it is just normal. And I think that kind of, that kind of ad is definitely something I really like seeing. And I think that's something that more, more companies should kind of lean into that type of advertising. Yeah, I've seen if I can pull it up real quick. I I, I don't have it. Yeah, I actually yeah. we did. We went through the last like year of Nintendo YouTube videos and counted the number of women, and it was astronomical. But it, yeah. so they they do a really good job. Now you got to be careful because you got to be careful with assumptions because a lot of people make assumptions about Nintendo. Like, oh, it's just Animal Crossing. It's just Mario, Kitty mm -hmm. games. Yeah, they they specialize in games that are family friendly, but not dumbed down family friendly. Mm -hmm. right and nowadays they actually do they've they've thrown off the rules and nintendo there is some crazy stuff on have some, these days some some rated m for mature yeah, games yeah they even sure. have a couple yeah. that i'm like mm, it's a little uh, <laughs> a, a little a little yeah. adult um, yeah but yeah, so. um so nintendo's a big one um i think uh god i know of course i'm gonna say this as we did with lenovo um but legion has actually made an effort in in some of their recent ads to include women and include them as equals, not like, a, oh, look look at our token woman playing a game here. Um, so they've been doing a fair bit of that. Um, and I feel like I feel like Xbox does a decent job um, because they've been kind of uh, cultivating their, their Game Pass service that makes, it kind of lowers the barriers because it's like a super brief, it's like, uh, like $10, $15 a month. And you, can just, it's, you get kind of like a Netflix of games. So it lowers mm -hmm. that barrier and it's a little easier for um, actually talking about what you're talking about, Thomas, like how do you get somebody to go from mobile gaming to real gaming? It it lowers that barrier of like, oh, I'm not going to spend $40 on this game that I don't know if I'm going to like because you have this, you can just pick everything, right? So I think Xbox has done pretty good in making sure it's a little more of a welcome environment. Um, outside of gaming, it's 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 kind of tough because you know a lot of a lot of like like the visas and the the progressives, you know. They might dabble in gaming, but it's such a little part of their portfolio that they basically just hit gamers and not so much um, any specific kind of little niche of the, of the gamers. So it's not to say that any of them are doing particularly bad. Um, Coke's, actually, I can't remember. Cassie, did you watch that Coke video? Did they even have any women in that? I don't, I don't remember, unfortunately. I don't want to, I don't want to say it, even though I can't think of it, I don't want to say yeah. it, but um yeah, yeah, N N Nintendo's Nintendo's really good. A lot of the indie developers, um, which I won't I won't bother with specific names because if you're not a if you're not a gamer, it's probably not going to mean anything. But if you just search for the indie gamers, you'll see a lot of more. Um, you see a lot more uh, people of color, a lot more LGBTQ um, involved in those, and um, a lot more women developers involved in those as well. It's starting to percolate up into the um, into the the AAA studios, but again, you see stuff like all this ridiculousness going on with Activision Blizzard. And, you know, it's it's definitely the indie world is a little more welcoming uh, to, to women at the moment. Cool. 
Awesome. Well, thanks again for your time. Um, do you have any, uh, uh, you know, closing thoughts or anything like that regarding uh, women gamers? I'm going to go back to my buzzword, be authentic. It goes for gaming as well, but but be authentic. Make sure make sure you 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 know the audience you're talking to. Don't make assumptions about the audience. Yep. Nope. Totally same for me. And just I think the space is really exciting, and I hope that it's something that more companies start looking seriously into, not just yeah, as an absolutely. afterthought. Yeah. Yeah, and we're we're lucky to uh, work with companies like Lenovo, who are you know actively um, trying to understand uh, the women gamers, right? So I think. I think that's great. Oh, well, Sean, Cassie, thanks again for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, and we'll send the deliverables, the recording to everyone who uh, attended today live and everyone who um, pre-registered. Uh, so that should be in your inbox pretty shortly. And um, those we'll videos. See... Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and we'll see, um, oh, hopefully we'll see most of you guys next week. It's... Sorry, we'll see most of you next week when we talk to Joanna Lepore about uh, foresight in research. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you.